this fun video. This guy, especially there's a lot of stress, maybe some stress around eating, um, but stress in general with COVID. And so today we're gonna to talk about how stress impacts our eating and how to be more mindful. All right, so yeah, like I said, today we're gonna to start by talking about stress and how stress um, impacts our eating behavior. And then we'll dive into what mindful eating is. And then we will discuss how to practice mindfulness. And so first, how stressed are you? Um, so this wasn't recent, or I guess it was recent. In, 19, or in 2019, the APA did a survey of 3,600 adults um, specifically examining their stress levels. And so in this graph we have, um, we're seeing that millennials are among the, um, one of the highest groups that are experiencing stress compared to older adults and boomers and Xers. And so Xers and millennials, these are our college age groups and it looks like they are the most stressed. Uh, from this survey, they also found that um, Gen Z uh, is stressed about money and they're stressed about health related things and they're stressed about work. Um, they also found that um, this age category, so the college age students, they're experiencing a lot of moderate stress and high stress compared to other age ranges. And so how is this, how is this impacting our behavior? So um, from the adults that said that they're experiencing stress, um, specifically they, these adults listed that um, some of them were skipping meals because they were so stressed and even more were eating too much um, and laying awake at night because of stress. Of the groups that said that they were eating too much because of stress, they reported um, overeating on these highly um, calorically dense, but not nutritionally dense foods. So we've got our candies and chocolates, our ice cream and potato chips, our cookies, fast food, pizza, pasta, and crackers. Um, these are the popular, more popular items to reach for when we're stressed um, compared to healthier options like nuts and seeds, fruits and vegetables. I don't think I've ever, ever been, really ever been stressed and thought, man, I could just go crazy on a bag of carrots. So this data just shows us that the foods that we do overconsume when we're stressed are these unhealthy type foods. So to conclude the, those data um, points, the stress causes a mess. So stress is associated with the inability to consciously eat. And that's why we're seeing these changes in eating behaviors when we're stressed. So I wanted to pose this question. There isn't a Zoom poll, I'm sorry, but um, just respond in the chat. How does your stress impact your eating behaviors? So is it in the way that they saw in the, from the survey? Are you a hungry, stressed person? Do you end up skipping meals when you're stressed? How do you cope? Mm -hmm. So it looks like you guys are a mixed, kind of like the results from that survey where some people are skipping meals when they're stressed and others are reaching for comforting foods. Okay, so when we're stressed, we have a lack of mindfulness at mealtime and this can be linked with overconsumption, which is that stress eating um, that can lead to a positive energy balance, which is um, when you eat more than you um, burn 
And then this can lead to weight gain and increased cardiovascular disease risk that I talked about um, in our, my previous presentation. So um, to combat those outcomes, we wanna focus on being more mindful at mealtime. So today, the main focus of this presentation is talking about mindful eating. So what is it? Mindful eating is the awareness in which, in what, how, and why each time we eat. And so the main tenets of mindful eating is tuning in, experience, experiencing your meal, appreciating the nourishment, and trusting yourself. So let's talk about tuning in. Tuning in. So stress is linked with dysfunctional hunger signals. And so when we talk about tuning in, we're specifically talking about getting in tune with how your body is feeling. By pausing, you might be able to better interpret your hunger cues, which is a main and important part of mindful eating. So what are these cues? There are internal and external appetite cues. Specifically, we know about one hunger hormone, which is an internal cue of appetite called ghrelin. And so ghrelin works like this. When you have an empty stomach, ghrelin is released from the stomach and signals to the brain that um, it's time to eat. And then, so meal, an increase in ghrelin causes meal time initiation in which then when you eat, your stomach becomes full, which stops the ghrelin signal. But when you have lower levels of ghrelin, um, you might have better appetite control because your body is not always signaling to you to initiate a meal or to consume foods. So I feel like I already went through that kind of fast, but um, just to make sure that you guys are tracking, what is the function of ghrelin? Is it to stimulate meal time? Is it in response to hunger? Is it because you're super full? Okay, nice. It looks like you guys are tracking. So when, when we feel hungry, it's because there's an increase in ghrelin. Awesome. Okay, so there was a study that looked at mindful eating and how that impacts ghrelin. And they found that ghrelin levels were decreased in response to mindfulness training. So the study trained a group of people to do mindfulness um, techniques, and they saw that baseline levels of ghrelin in the mindfulness group were reduced compared to a group that wasn't practicing mindfulness, which means that they had lower levels of ghrelin, causing them to be, I guess, less, they have less of a feeling of hungriness at baseline compared to a non-mindfulness group. Um, and so to wrap that up, mindfulness training may help us not feel so hungry all the time because it stabilizes our levels of ghrelin. Um, externally, we have our subjective appetite cues. These include meal timing, group think, and the clean plate club. So meal timing um, is, has a big influence on um, our appetite and how much we choose to consume at a given period. And so there's different uh, things that may lead to overeating that and influence our intake, like eating late at night, snacking, and how what our workday is like. For group think, um, things that might lead to overconsumption or ignoring those natural hunger cues is um, when we eat for an extended period of time or if our meal time is longer. So if you are given a longer opportunity to consume food, you might continue to consume soup food past when you actually hit that full point. Um, studies have also shown that peer pressure may lead to overconsumption or consuming food past the time you're full. Um, and then 
there's also been studies showing that friends whether you're eating with friends or with people that aren't your friends, that might also influence how much you consume in a given time. Um, and then another influence over appetite that is good to consider is the clean play club. And so um, we know that our eating behaviors are learned and something that we learn from traditions or cultural expectations. And so being mindful of um, not necessarily feeling like you have to clean your plate, especially if you are full before you do that. Um, being aware of maybe how you've learned to eat previously and how being more mindful might help you meet your goals or be better in tune with your body. Um, this is something to consider when it comes to appetite. Okay, so that was all about tuning in. So make sure that you are listening to your body. Your body has physiological cues that tell you if you're hungry or not, but also making sure that you're aware of those subjective influences on appetite, super important with mindful eating. Um, the next component of mindful eating is to experience your meal. So by eating mindfully, you'll acknowledge that what, what you specifically enjoy about a particular food um, which will give you a chance to really experience what you're eating. So don't just admire your food. Make sure you're smelling your food, thinking about the texture of your food, and savoring every bite you take. So um, I mentioned this in the presentation last week, but we are going to try it. So um, I have this audio recording that will help guide us through what mindful eating is. So if you guys want to grab your snacks. Of mindfulness. Uh, Start by sitting in a comfortable position with an erect yet relaxed posture. Can you guys hear anything? Close your eyes or have a soft right gaze here. down at the floor. You can? Take a couple of deep breaths. Let your belly be soft and full as you breathe in and expel all of the air as you breathe out. Gradually let the breath become natural and effortless. Feel the movement of the belly, the rib cage, and the chest in response to the air coming into and out of the body. Now scan your body from head to toe. Notice the current state of your body. Are there places of tension? Places that feel relaxed? What parts of your body feel warm or cool? Is the body energized or fatigued? Just notice what is present. Take your time. Pay particular attention to the sensations at the area of the stomach. Are there sensations of hunger, of satiety? How hungry or full are you? Are you thirsty? You might notice thoughts of judgment about your stomach. Just let those come and go. Next, notice what feelings are present. You might be feeling curious, angry, happy, frustrated, confused, or content. No matter what feelings are present, acknowledge them with curiosity. are passing through your mind. Let thoughts arise, exist, and pass away without getting caught up in the story of the thoughts as best you can. You might notice how the feelings and the thoughts are connected. If you are feeling restless, you might have thoughts about needing to get something done. Or if you're feeling angry, you might be having thoughts about someone who upsets you. Just notice what's present without judging. When you know what your body feels like, 
what feelings are present, and what thoughts are going through your head, you've dropped out of automatic pilot. For a couple of more moments, sit and breathe and experience what it means to be alive in this moment. When your mind gets lost in a story, bring your attention back to the passing sensations that are available in the present moment. Body, breath, sounds. It doesn't matter how many times the mind wanders. The important thing is to notice without judgment and bring your attention back. Each time the mind wanders and you notice it is a moment of waking up to the present. Notice that some things you experience feel pleasant and some not so pleasant. No matter what you're experiencing, allowing each moment to be exactly as it is and allowing yourself to be exactly as you are. Sitting, breathing, and simply being. And when you're ready, opening your eyes. So. Okay. So I think she didn't tell you guys to eat your food. I couldn't hear the audio recording, but um, I hope you enjoyed that. If you do have a snack, feel free to eat it if you feel hungry. I'm going to go back to the... I don't know if I want to share a sound anymore. I felt so left out, but I probably shouldn't. Okay. A pen, a pencil, just any regular object. So firstly, we're going to explore this object using Excellent. our senses. There's some, there's some okay. sound. Maybe one of your tabs is playing. So really look at your object oh. first. Really Sorry. Thanks, Mariah. Okay, so um, the last tenant of mindful eating, or there, I think there's two more, but um, anyways, th and the next measurement that, or tenant that I wanted to talk about is uh, to appreciate nourishment. So understanding your meal and the nutrition that provides will help us better appreciate and um, be mindful when we consume food. Um, and so mindful eating doesn't necessarily mean that as long as you feel like you want to eat something, you definitely should, um, but it doesn't condone foods as bad. But I think the best thing to remember when you are mindful eating is to use nutrition as your guide. And so eating healthy makes you feel good. Um, and this is something that we want to remember when we're making food decisions. Um, and so nutrition guidelines exist to help us make those food decisions and referring to my plate um, or looking for those red heart symbols in the dining hall um, will help you make these healthy decisions when it comes to choosing what foods to eat. And so here's a picture of the my plate. Uh, Mariah did a really awesome job with going through what a healthy plate looks like last week, but these are just general recommendations to always have your vegetables on your plate, some protein and grains, a fruit, and then a source of dairy. And so I've got another video. Let's hope this one works. Can you hear it? Eating healthy is important. The foods and drinks you choose for meals and snacks can help you be healthier now and in the future. And it's more than eating one healthy meal or one healthy snack. Your food choices add up and they all matter. So where to start? First, choose foods from all five food groups throughout the day and throughout the week. Fruits, vegetables, grains, protein foods, and dairy. 
Your fruits and vegetables can be fresh, frozen, dried, or canned. Try roasting or steaming them as a healthful option. Try starting your day with whole grains, like oatmeal or whole grain cereal. For extra flavor and crunch, add your favorite fruit or a handful of nuts. Stuck in the same old routine? Mix up your protein foods. Try seafood twice a week. And enjoy milk and yogurt, in recipes or on their own. Read labels and ingredient lists to compare foods and choose healthier options. Across all of your choices, drink and eat less sodium, saturated fat, and added sugars. And hey, we know it's not always on a plate. It's about making shifts no matter where you are. Start with small changes to make healthier choices you can enjoy. Small changes add up to big wins. For more information, visit choosemyplate.gov. Okay, awesome. So that was kind of a cool way to think about mindful eating in terms of nutrition recommendations. Um, and the last tenet of mindful eating that I wanted to discuss was just trusting yourself. Um, and so if you're in tune with your appetite, if you are recognizing that there might be other influences on you that might be causing you to feel a certain way, um, if you're appreciating your food and understanding the nutrition that of the food that you're consuming, um, I think trusting yourself is something that will come really easily and naturally. So not every day of eating has to be the same and your eating experiences are unique to you. So by trusting yourself and not making comparisons with others, you're going to be able to mindfully eat. Um, the, the take home with this trusting yourself concept is that no food is bad. And so when you trust yourself to make good food choices, you avoid any guilt associated with guilty pleasures. So if you're feeling down about something that you've chosen to consume, um, it's important to check back in or tune in, highlight the good things about your eating experience, and send your negative thoughts away. So let's talk about the, these individually. So checking back in, that's the number one thing you want to do when you consume a food and feel guilty about it. Um, so when you are feeling this way, it's important to first ask yourself, what's really going on? Are you bored, tired, stressed, or sad? And then ask, how can I best take care of myself right now? All right, the next step when, you're, when you are feeling like you ate a bad food is to highlight the good things about your eating experience. So a balance, it's so important when you're doing this to understand that a balanced, varied, nutritious diet allows for both pleasure and health. And that when you think in this rigid, restrictive way, you're limiting um, these feelings of pleasure and health that you can get from food. So whenever you're feeling this way, remember to celebrate the variety. Um, and last but not least, when you're feeling this way, just send those thoughts away. Sending these bad thoughts away allows you to have the freedom to celebrate your life, culture, family, friends, and home through food. And so Mindful eating is a huge promoter of not labeling any foods as bad because we, we want to eat a varied diet. We want to celebrate our life and we want to do that with food, through food. Um, so in this picture, as an example, what do you see? If you want to respond in the chat, that would work. cupcakes. Yep, chocolate cupcakes. They look freaking amazing. Today is actually my birthday, so I think I might be staring down some of these cupcakes later today. Um, so to talk about these cupcakes, research has identified relationships between chocolate cake and post-consumption emotions. And in their analysis, they found that post-meal guilt was associated with unhealthy patterns and feeling 
feelings of powerlessness. So that's that guilt that we were talking about. Um, guilty feelings were associated with weight gain in eight, 18 months later and weight gain the, and that weight gain was attenuated if your post meal feelings were of celebration and not of guilt. And so that's why sending those emotions away and dealing with feelings of guilt after a meal head on are so important. Um, oh, I guess I wrapped that up pretty quick, but um, to conclude the presentation, I um, wanna stress that stress can disrupt normal eating patterns and that practicing mindfulness reduces stress and increases our ability to eat well and eat the amount that our body wants. Mindful eating is an, is, can be easily incorporated into practice and supports good health. And so I implore all of you guys, when you go into the dining hall or go into any meal, remember these tips and to um, do what is best for you. Okay, I guess I can take questions now. That was a pretty quick presentation. I didn't realize that was gonna be so quick, but um, if you guys wanna talk about anything in terms of appetite, I do study appetite in my lab, so I hopefully will be able to answer your questions. I have a question for you, Betsy. Mm -hmm. So what is your favorite way to practice mindfulness while you're eating? Oh, awesome. Um, so usually before going into a meal situation, I like to um, take a moment. So I think I mentioned this earlier, but it's important to pause before mealtime to really assess what you're feeling like and what you want to do with that meal. And so I'm a huge breakfast person, and but some days I wake up and I am so full. I don't know why. But other days I wake up and I'm starving to death. And so um, that's something that I can realize pretty quickly because I think in dreamland, I probably think about it. And then what, as soon as I wake up, I'm like, okay, I'm hungry or I'm not hungry. And so um, taking that pause is the first thing that I do. But I also think that with mindfulness and mindful eating, it's important to do a mid-meal check-in also, because I think I'm someone that was raised on the clean play club, and my mom was always personally offended when we didn't when we didn't consume our whole plate. And so, as an adult, I've realized that this is the style of eating that I've learned. Um, and so, when I do these mid meal checks, it allows me to really think about: Do I want to finish the rest of my plate? or should I save this for the next meal or for snacks for later if I am hungry? And so I even did this last night, I was having pasta and usually I would fill my bowl of pasta and eat the whole thing. But I did my mid meal check-in and was like, you know what, I'm full now, this will make a great lunch for tomorrow. And so, um, I think especially if you have been raised on the clean plate club, it's a really good and important way to practice mindfulness. Thank you. You also have some questions I can read to you. How do you manage mindful eating on special occasions like birthdays? That's, that's a good one. Um, I think if you're talking about Oh, that's such a good question because to me, I feel like part of mindfulness is balance and part of healthy eating is balance. And so if you are hungry and it's your birthday and that's the time of year that you have sweet treats, I think if you check in with yourself and you're like, I'm hungry and it's my birthday, then go for it, obviously. Like we, like I said in the presentation, 
food is a part of celebrations. And so demonizing the fact that you want to have sweet treats on your birthday is something that is negative. And that study showed that when you have negative feelings after a meal, that might lead to possible weight gain later on. Of course, that's an association, but if you are at your birthday and there are sweet treats and you go for it, I think leaving that eating experience with celebration instead of guilt is something that's so critical. And I think with mindfulness training, before you go into any celebration situation with food, it's important to make a plan and check in with yourself periodically because if you plan and are hungry and everything is great, there's, I think there's no reason to be feeling down because those foods are a part of your celebration. But if you go into it and you don't make a plan, you might you might have those feelings of guilt because you didn't plan to incorporate food into your celebration. And so I think it can be tricky, but I think that's where those mid celebration check-ins are so important because you might wanna indulge in that cake, but like, I, like for me, I would probably want to check in with myself even after, after that first bite, because some of those things can be so yummy that having that taste is what we want, but maybe we don't want to eat as much as you would um, when you're trying to clean your plate. And so even like over the years, I've gotten better with um, when I eat chocolate, I'll take a bite and really savor the flavor because it's, it can be so rich and it can be so lovely, but when you eat chocolate so quickly, you don't give yourself the chance to really enjoy it. And so I've gotten a lot better with candies and sweets over the years and mindfulness training, where when you eat those sweet things or those really salty things, taking a moment to really appreciate the tastes because um, they are so good. Yeah, I think those are really good points. And um, I also wanted to mention too, like when I think of special occasions, I always think of um, my family uh, celebrations where like Thanksgiving or um, holidays where, you know, the the status quo is to just eat until you bust. And um, I just wanted to say that, you know, if you if you find yourself, you know, over full and you, you ate more than you planned on eating, that's totally okay. Um, what I would say is just, pay attention to how it feels and um, take note of it and say, you know, for, for me, I, I know I get really uncomfortable if I ate more than I intended to uh, feeling wise, like my, my belly hurts. Um, so it's a feeling that I don't enjoy and probably don't want to happen again. So you can take that knowledge that you have into the next time that you eat. Um, but it's not something to feel guilty about. It's just noticing how your body feels and adjusting based off of how it is feeling. Right, like those feelings maybe aren't something that you wanna have every day, but if those things, even like for me, I think I enjoy the, the overstuffed feelings on Thanksgiving, <laughs> but I don't want that feeling every single day. And so, like remembering these things will help you be more mindful in the future. So true. Okay, so the next question is, does drinking water help with appetite? Yes, okay. So um, I actually am in this metabolism class and we were just talking about this the other day. And so as we, when we were talking about ghrelin, so ghrelin sends signals when your stomach is full. And so there are many ways to fill your stomach, one temporarily including water. And so that's why when people are saying like, oh, drink a full glass of water before you eat, um, because your, um, your appetite signals are sensed 
um, and can be sent when your stomach expands. Um, water might be one way to do that, but of course water moves through our system very quickly. And so you're not going to get a prolonged appetite feeling or like a robust appetite um, stimulation from water intake, but also water isn't bad for you. So if you're thinking about increase, increasing your water intake, you should definitely do it. Um, and it might, it might impact how you feel. It might make you more full, but it wouldn't be something that's prolonged necessarily. Um, but when you think about how you feel when you eat a bunch of soup versus like um, something that isn't so water dense, water can be one way to bulk up your foods to cause more feelings of fullness um, for less energy intake, if that makes sense. So um, water is one way to do that. Fiber content is another way to do that. And so that's why like vegetables are recommended with every meal because you're getting that increased bulking effect in your stomach, which sends greater um, fullness signals to your brain. That's a really long winded answer, but um, fiber is good. Water is good. Great things for appetite control. Um, but that might be why you feel full when you drink more water. Yeah. And I would say, I think I've also heard that um, sometimes the feeling of thirst of dehydration can feel like hunger and vice versa, maybe hunger might feel like you're thirsty. Um, so, you know, tuning into your, your mindfulness and how your body's feeling, um, you can kind of discern, am I hungry? Am I thirsty? Have I had enough water today? Have I had enough food today? Um, so it'll help you kind of figure out what is your body asking for? I don't know if this is scientifically correct, but I've heard that if you pinch your knuckles and your knuckle skin stays up, for a long time, like mine's staying up for a really long time right now, it means that you're dehydrated. Mine didn't stay up and I drink a lot of water during the day, so yes. maybe it works. <laughs> okay. I'll drink more water. <laughs> <laughs> so the next question is, is eating three meals a day important or could you, could you do say two slightly larger ones? Um, I think that's where mindful eating comes into play. Of course, you know, we know that breakfast is important and eating meals and intermittently through the day is important. Um, but that's where mindful eating can help guide us, um, in where, you know, if you're not hungry immediately in the morning time, you don't have to eat right away when you wake up. You know, or if you're not hungry for lunch at your normal lunch time, you don't have to eat at that normal time. Or if you're only hungry for a small snack, you don't have to eat an entire meal. So I think using mindful eating as a way to govern when we eat and how much we eat is what the purpose of mindful eating is about. Um, as far as how many meals you should be consuming every day, I think that's um, maybe a recommendation that I'm not prepared to make, but I think if your body is telling you to eat three meals a day, that that's what you should do. Yeah, I would agree on that one. If you, if you feel super hungry in the morning, you are likely very hungry. So, um, or whatever meal that you may be missing out on. Um, so consider just listening to your body and, and giving it what it's asking for. Cause it, it knows better than, you know, I would, I'm not going to be able to tell you how you should feel, you know? Yeah. You guys have a perfect answer is that it really does come down to mindfulness and what you're feeling. However, at the same time, you still want to make sure you're getting like minimum of food groups to make sure your nutrient needs are being met. So you want to make sure you had like at least a fruit or a vegetable or a good protein source. And that way your two meals aren't just consisting of say um, one food group only. 
So um, that would be the only caveat that I would add to that. And you got to remember that normal eating is some days you want to eat two meals, some days you want to eat three, some days you want to have some snacks in between, and some days you don't want any. And all of those are fine. Um, you just really want to just trust your gut and see how hungry you are and like not overeat when you're too full, but then not go more than like five hours without eating. Um, either you want to try to have at least a meal every five hours. And as, and as far as breakfast is concerned, you just really want to make sure that you're eating within two hours of waking up. And so if you wake up at 11 and you're eating by one, that's technically your first meal. That's technically your breakfast, even though you might be eating lunch foods. Okay, I think we have one more question. Um, it says, I know that we went over fruit and how important it is to include in meals, but would applesauce be an appropriate food for a meal? And I'm not sure if they're asking is if it's, a, an appropriate fruit source or if that would count as a whole meal. And I can just jump in and say, definitely applesauce just by itself would not count as a full meal, but okay, yeah, they said fruit source. So I'll let you answer, Betsy. <laughs> um, I mean, I think fruit in any form fits this category. Um, certainly when you eat apples in applesauce form, you're not getting the fiber that's associated with the whole fruit. So you may miss out on some of that, um, the good gut effects and then maybe the appetite increasing effects that you would get with an apple. I think I actually just read a study about eating an apple before you eat a meal to help increase full, fullness. Um, and not over consume at the meal because the fiber in a whole apple um, does contribute that much to how full you're feeling. Um, but I think excluding applesauce as a, as a fruit source would be wrong because if you are like, I want to eat fruit, the only fruits that I like are applesauce, then eat applesauce. Then you get your fruit, check. Yeah, and I was going to say that applesauce is really great as a condiment. Like you can put it on top of pancakes or waffles instead of syrup. And then I know, I know this sounds weird, but a lot of athletes will use it when they're um, exercising for long periods of time. And so they'll take it with them on cycling and like just kind of slurp it in those bottles. Um, and I grew up in Florida and that's like a really popular uh, food for surfers. Um, you take a huge jar of applesauce and you put it on the beach. And that way, when you're out surfing for five hours in a row, you just come in and drink your applesauce. And I mean, literally, they'll just drink it out of the container. And, um, and it just keeps you going. It's a really good energy, quick energy source. Um, and so it's applesauce has its place. It's really great. But um, as Betsy said, it doesn't have the skin. And so like if you have a choice and you like regular apples, go ahead and eat a regular apple sometimes too. Don't just only have applesauce. Like go back and forth, get that nutrient variety because some of those phytochemicals are in the skin. Yeah, and if you're getting um, applesauce from the store, you can always check the label to make sure that they're not adding sugar to the applesauce. If they do, that's fine, but you're better off going for a no sugar added applesauce, especially if that's your only fruit source. We got some more questions coming in. Um, what does chewing gum do for hunger slash boredom? Sometimes I just eat out of boredom, but I might be hungry some of those times too. So it looks like they're not sure. Yeah, that's a good question. So, um, so much of appetite comes from our subjective feelings of appetite and then also our internal cues. But um, another way that you can stimulate uh, those satiety signals in your brain is by tickling your vagus nerve, which you can do um, through a chewing motion. Um, so that's kind of maybe where you are maybe thinking that chewing gum would help curb feelings of hunger. I'm not sure that it would stimulate hunger, um, but maybe that chewing motion is reminding you of eating and causing you to want to eat. Um, but certainly with 
boredom eating, that's where mindfulness really comes into play, where you're checking in, am I hungry? Am I just bored? Can I have a water and see how I feel? Can I get up? Shoot. Can you hear me? Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> my headphones just stopped. I don't think I can hear you anymore. But um, I think I was saying that checking in with yourself um, when you are bored and wanting to eat food is um, one way to see if you're bored or see if you're just hungry. I won't be able to hear you anymore. Okay. Do you want to do it? Yes. Yeah, we'll wrap up for you since uh, you can't, can't hear us. But um, one thing I was going to add when it comes to boredom is um, drink a glass of water and wait 20 minutes. If you are still hungry after 20 minutes, it's true hunger. If after 20 minutes you don't feel hungry anymore, you are thirsty and not hungry. And like Mariah was saying earlier, like we require a lot of water for metabolism. And if you don't get enough water through the day, you will sometimes feel, that, feel this sort of gurgling sensation in your stomach. And so if you've ever had a meal and like one hour later, you're feeling hungry in your stomach, it's not true hunger usually. It could be, but usually what's happening is your body saying, please give me water. You just gave me a huge meal and I don't have enough water. So that's like what we call like the water test. So you drink the water and 20 minutes later, you're either good or you you know that you're, you're hungry. It's true hunger. All right. So since that was the last question and Betsy can't hear us anymore, poor thing, um, we're going to wrap up. Um, thank you all for joining us during the Eating Smart course. I have been taking attendance. So if you've attended all four of the classes, I will be contacting you tomorrow um, about picking up a t-shirt. Um, if you haven't seen all of the courses yet, um, we have them recorded. One through three are currently posted on the Dining Services website, and I am putting the link in the chat right now. Um, you can watch any of those and then answer the three questions that I sent to you guys. Um, if you don't have those anymore, just reach out to me um, and we can get you that free t-shirt still. Um, other than that, is there anything else you wanted to say, Catherine? All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining us. This has been really cool doing this virtually. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and tell your friends because we do this every semester. Um, so get all your friends to come to the Eating Smart class. All right. Thanks everyone. <laughs>